In this video, I'll show you how to create this really cool Elementor header that is responsive, sticky, and changes from transparent to opaque when you scroll. We'll also be using the Elementor pop-up feature to create this off-canvas menu for small screen sizes. Don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to our channel for more tutorials. To get started, you'll need a few plugins, Elementor, Elementor Pro, and Ooboy Steroids for Elementor. You'll also need a page long enough so that we can see the sticky header in action. I've already created one here. So let's get started. Head over to Templates, and then click on Theme Builder. Here you'll hover over header and click on the little plus symbol. Let's close this default window and we're going to add a new section with two columns. Then let's quickly add a logo. We'll use the image and I'll use a logo that I have already created. We'll resize the logo in a second. Let's go ahead and save the header, go down to settings and then we'll rename the header header two and then click on publish. Here, where do we want it to display? We'll choose the entire site and then click save and close. Now let's switch over to our landing page and see if we see it. There we go, the header is right there on top. Let's continue with our editing. Click on edit header, and we'll start by resizing the logo. Let's change it to 200 pixels. Then we have to resize our column. We'll use the steroids plugin to set a custom width of 220 pixels. That's 200 pixels plus 10 pixels for padding on each side of the column. Now let's set the width of the second column. We'll use the custom width to use calc and then we'll go 100% minus the 220 pixels of the first column. Next, let's add a new nav menu. Drag it over and then we'll align it to the right it doesn't look like it's aligned very well with the logo, so click on the column, and then we'll set vertical align to middle. There we go. Now since we're making this header transparent, let's move the landing page's content up so that the header sits on top of the hero image. First, let's change the height of the header section. Under layout, change height to min height, then set the minimum height to 100 pixels. Then under advanced tab, let's increase the section Z index to five. If not, the header will be hiding behind the hero image. Go ahead and click update and save the header. Now we need to edit the landing page. Click on edit page. And we're gonna set the top margin of this section to negative 100. There we go. Now go ahead and click update again. Now let's switch back to the header. Click on edit header. You might barely be able to see it there because of the Z index. Now I'll edit the styling of the nav menu. I'll try to make it match the site a little better. I'm gonna speed this part up. All right, there we go, looks pretty good. Now let's add in our social icons. Type in social. And we'll just drag them over here. To get the icons in line with the nav menu, we'll need to set both elements to inline. Click on the icons and then go to advanced and then change width to inline. Do the same for the nav menu. Now let's move everything back to the right. Under the column settings, change horizontal align to end. Now let's style the icons. We'll add some left margin, maybe 45 pixels to match the space between the nav menu. We'll also change the styling of these icons to match the site a little better. I'm going to speed this up again. Okay, now let's make it responsive. Click on responsive mode and switch to tablet. We can see right away that we need to make some changes on the tablet size. Our nav menu swaps to the built-in toggle button, which has a few issues. 
First, we would like to be able to hide our social icons and have them appear inside of our mobile nav menu. Also, the built-in toggle button pops up the nav menu in a way that just isn't pleasing to the eye. To get around this, I normally use an icon that links to an element or pop-up menu. So first on the nav menu, let's change the breakpoint to none, which makes the nav menu reappear. Now we'll resize the logo. Let's change the width to 160 pixels. And then we'll also adjust the column. We'll change the column width to 180 pixels. Now let's adjust the second column and change the calculation to 100% minus 180 pixels. Now let's resize our nav menu and icons to fit on one line. I'll quickly play with the font sizes, the icon sizes, and the spacing between the elements until all of it fits and looks good. Now let's check out the mobile version. Okay, so that looks bad. Let's swap out this nav menu and social icons for a menu icon. We'll link the menu icon to an element or pop-up, and that will house our mobile nav menu. So let's go back to the desktop size, and we'll add our new menu icon. Let's swap out the icon for the bars icon. There we go. Change the width to inline. Change the size to 30. And we'll set the color to match our site. Then we'll link the icon to our mobile pop-up menu that I created earlier. We'll cover adding the icon in this video, but for a full tutorial on creating this element or pop-up menu, I've linked a video in the description. Now let's hide it on desktops and tablets. Go to Advanced and then Responsive and click Hide on Desktop and Hide on Tablet. Okay, back to the mobile size. Let's hide the nav menu and the social icons. On both elements, go to Advanced, Responsive and click Hide on Mobile. You see it grays them out. In Navigator, you can click on the eyes to hide show elements in this preview window. So now we have our completed responsive header. Now let's make it sticky so when you scroll down the page, it stays at the top of the viewport. First, select the main header section and go to the Advanced tab. Then, under Motion Effects, change Sticky to Top. That creates our default sticky effect. Then we want to change effects offset to about 120. You can play with this later to get the effect you want. Finally, we need to add some custom CSS. Click on custom CSS and use the following. We'll target the Elementor Sticky Effects class, which is a class that Elementor adds to the section once it is scrolled down to the effects offset value, which we just set at 120 pixels. First, let's make the background white. Alright, we can see that is already working, but it just switches straight to white. Let's make it fade in by adding a transition. We'll also need to add this transition to the section itself, so that it fades back to transparent. Let's also add a little box shadow to give it some depth and separate it from the content. Now just click update and let's take a look at our finished product. That's all for this video. If you want more Elementor tutorials, like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to see a tutorial on the mobile pop-up menu, I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching.